whoa, I am hooked. Um, so actually, it's interesting. I was thinking about this leading up to this, this uh, keynote here and thinking, what got me into open source? And what got me into open source? I've been involved for maybe 20 years. And I think I just started to understand. I'm not sure if I was manipulated into it uh, or, or what, but there's something about collaboration. There's something about working together uh, that creates that incentive and reward. And there was also something about investment and continuing and perfecting and getting more and more uh, a part of that tribal culture. So to me, I think we talk I, I live, breathe, and eat technology. We talk a lot about technology. Um, you just heard that the best technology doesn't always win. win. We've heard that for quite some time. There's the, you know, the classic VHS Betamax kind of discussion. What makes an open source project successful? Absolutely, there's a technology component. Um, you're trying to build important technology and build something that's useful for users. You're trying to solve a hard problem, uh, but there's a culture. There's a there's a, a group of people that are collaborating together, a community that are building something that I think creates a, a third important dimension, which is sometimes uh, I like to call the magic pixie dust of, of open source software. The ability to get involved easily, uh, the ability to make a difference independent of your, of your skills or where you fit into the mix, I think are really important critical pieces of, of creating a, a community. And one of the things that I think we can always work on improving is onboarding new community members. So this week has been really interesting. I love seeing amazing, eloquent teenagers on stage. It's not, not something I experience every day. And then, and then movie stars um, doing you know, really impressive things through collaboration and finding a path for anybody to get involved. And so the, the ability that we, uh, to the degree that we can uh, be open and embrace diversity, I think, will improve the community and improve the ultimate uh, technology that we're building together. I believe that open source is the modern innovation engine. And you hear that a lot. I don't think I'm the only person that would, that would fall into that category of believing this is a core way that we actually develop next generation technology. Um, the, so, so thank you for being involved in this, in this innovation engine. Um, it's something that's really important to Red Hat. Uh, we help work in these upstream communities, and we deliver this innovation to our customers. It's a big part of what we do. So we wouldn't be here without you. Um, I, and I had a, a curious a question. Who's independent of the name change, OSS uh, Summit, you know, LinuxCon, CloudOpen, ContainerCon, who's here for the first time? Is this a first? Wow. OK, that's awesome. I did not expect that. It's a large number of people. Uh, who's been involved in open source development for like two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years? OK, so we have a good mix. So the veterans, your job is to find the new people and bring them into the fold and really help them be welcome uh, so that we can continue to build this uh, amazing technology where we're, we're changing the world together. Uh, Linux, for me, is where I got started. And Linux is a platform, ubiquitous platform. The purpose of the platform is to run applications. And traditionally, uh, as an operating system, you know, part of your job is lighting up hardware, and part of your job is supporting applications. So you have an application running on, on a piece of hardware. One of the great uh, values that Linux brought was uh, independence between the underlying hardware and the application layer. So you kind of got disaggregated stacks. Today, those applications are not running on a single piece of hardware. They're running across a data center infrastructure, a cloud, uh, often containerized. Containerization just helps uh, separation of concerns for your application and your operations teams. And this platform that we're building together, for us, we're really invested in Kubernetes. This platform that we're building together is what I see as a next generation application platform, building that same level of independence between the application and the underlying infrastructure, where the infrastructure now may be a cloud, public cloud, or uh, internal data center. And I think what's interesting in this picture 
is the applications, you know, they're, some are new, some are old. What they have in common with the traditional side of the equation is their Linux applications. So containers are Linux. Your applications are running containerized on Linux. And this is really exciting for me, having spent a long time in the, in the Linux world. Uh, Linux continues to be highly relevant even as we you know, talk about higher level services. It's all grounded in what we've built in Linux. And it's actually, I don't know the exact story, but my recollection is roughly one day uh, Linus woke up grumpy because somebody had broken his laptop and issued a decree, thou shalt not break user space. And without that mentality of maintaining stability between the kernel and the application layer, containers really wouldn't have the power that they have today. Continuing on with the operating system, I think something that's really exciting, again, in the Linux space, making uh, more applications capable of running on a platform like Kubernetes. Initially, you start with that 80% general purpose, you know, the LAMP stack of Linux in the, in the early days. Uh, to get to ubiquity, you have to take on more and more niche workloads. And one of the things that's really exciting today, to me, is the cloud kind of obscured the underlying infrastructure, just made it homogenous. And that works well for a certain general class of problems. As we take on more and more problems, uh, trying to solve uh, more challenging scenarios, we have to look at what hardware is doing to support that. And so things like IoT, where you have edge devices that may have small form factors, uh, or machine learning, where you need GPUs to accelerate uh, your machine uh, learning frameworks, these are really starting to expose hardware, again, in ways that I think are really interesting and exciting. So that workload-specific optimization is a critical part of, of where we're going uh, together. And so I really just wanted to say thank you very much for your focus and passion on open source. We're making a huge difference. We saw earlier in the week, or uh, last week, some major security concerns. Uh, so we also have to continue to up our game and help the industry uh, build wonderful and safe technology. So thank you. Pursue your passion. Have a great week here.